Welcome back to Web API Tutorials. I am Venkat. This is part 5 Web API Request and Response. Let's look at what is request and what is response. What are the contents of these two request and response objects? Okay, coming to the distributed applications like a server client model. So, this is a server, web server, and this one is a client. So when client wants to get some data from server, it will put a request to the server. Server will take that request and process it and it responds back to the client with the response. We can say this as the request and this one as the response. Request will have three components mainly. Okay, first one is a verb. Verb is nothing but HTTP action okay next one is a headers headers are nothing but metadata or instructions to the server and content is the data if we want to send something to the server these are the three main components of the request object and coming to the response object response also has the three components first one is the status when server is responding back to the client it will respond with the states of that particular request so whether that request succeeded or failed that particular status will be put in the status code and responds back to the client and headers are the metadata similar to the request and content is nothing but the data server wants to give back to the client that's the data content is nothing but the data okay these are the request and response objects let's look into request object in detail so this is the request object verb we have discussed verb as a http actions okay what are the actions available in web api so these are the actions get post put delete patch these are the actions available in web api request so there are other verbs also there but you can go through that so these are the main actions we will go through in this series so coming to the headers these are the sample headers like content type so you can tell the server like this is the content type i am requesting in so it can be json or xml like that content length will indicate that what is the length of the request content and authorization header will be used when you are um, sending the authorization token to the server so these are the sample headers we will work with them in the series and coming to the content content is nothing but the data if you want to send it to the server that's this test data or some data okay so coming to the response object this is the response so coming to this first one is a status this status is nothing but a status status will be indicated with status codes there are five number of status codes five series first one is the 100 to 199 second one is the 200 to 299 third one is the 300 to 399 and fourth one is a 400 to 499 fifth one is the 500 to 599 these are the five series status codes available in web api okay so so first one 100 to 199 will be used for informational data so if server wants to give back the informational status code it will give 100 to 199 so it will use that and if server wants to give a status success codes it will be giving back 200 to 299 so every number between 200 to 299 indicates a separate separate success status code suppose if you want to see 200 200 is a success ok status if there is a post create request you need to respond back with a 201 201 indicates record created okay there is a 204 if you want to say that request is succeeded but there is no content is giving back to the client so you can use 204 in that case so like that 300 to 399 will be used for redirectional status codes and coming to the 400 to 499 so these are the client errors 400 to 499 are client errors 500 to 599 are the server errors if you want to indicate that there is a client error in the request so if the client is not requesting you properly then you can use 400 to 499 
suppose there is a bad request if the client needed to send some important data if that is missing we can say that bad request so that's how server responds with a 400 so then 401 is a unauthorized if you need to come back with the authorization token if you are not coming back with that token then server responds back with the 401 unauthorized status code okay then coming to the 404 we will be seeing in every website 404 is something where the requesting resource is not there in the server not found in the server okay 404 is a not found and 409 is a conflict like this 400 series is for client errors and coming to the 500 series 500 series is for server errors so the famous server error is the 500 internal server error if there is something wrong or failed in the server then server responds back with the server error status code okay these are the status codes server will use when it is responding back to the request headers are similar to the request object so content type is nothing but uh, what is the content type we are giving back uh, json or um, xml like that and content length is the length of the response content and authorization is nothing but that will be used in a request object i think it cannot be used in the response and content is nothing but the content server is responding back that's the response data these are the web api request and response objects in detail thank you for watching